In this tutorial, I'm going to go over using Particle Illusion in Vegas Pro. There are a few things that you're going to want to know as a new user. This is coming at you from a relatively new user. I wanted to share what I'd learned. There aren't a lot of specific tutorials for Vegas Pro. There's some overview. Boris has a few videos that'll show you how to do some specific things. But there's some gotchas that in some ways you can only learn by trying and getting support from their forum. And by the way, it's excellent support. Or by going through all of their videos. There are little gems that you'll find just about in every video that isn't necessarily included in every other video. So if you see a video that is covering a subject that you think you're interested in or you're trying to do, but it's specific to a different product, say After Effects, take a look. There will be things that you can't use, but when it comes to Mocha, they pretty much work the same. So what I'm going to show you is the three different kinds of tracking that you can do using a combination of Particle Illusion and the built-in Mocha. So I'll show you three different kinds of tracking that you can use with Particle Illusion. There's world tracking, where the camera is moving, but the object that you're tracking against is not. And the second, where the emitter is moving, but the camera is not. And the third, where both are moving. And I'll give you some gotchas and whatnot for each case. So in the first case, we've got footage here that is much less than ideal. If you're doing some tracking and you have the luxury of planning it ahead of time, do. If you're new, then there are going to be lots of things that you don't know you need to worry about. So for example, when I shot this footage, I hadn't learned about tracking markers. Some of you are going to be going, oh, what a noob. Yes, I was. I am. Um, there's still lots of things that I have to learn. So things would have gone a whole lot better with this footage if I had had some additional tracking markers. Why is that? Well, I thought that I could simply use the uh, fire hydrant here. And you can to a certain extent, but Mocha really wants pixels to work with. So if you have lower resolution footage, and 1080p isn't all that low, um, it's actually pretty good footage, then you'll have difficulty. If you also have big areas where there just isn't a lot of texture detail like this asphalt pad, uh, Mocha will have a little bit of trouble. There's ways around it though, and I'll show you that. So I mentioned lower resolution footage. The reason I mentioned that is at one point I decided to try tracking this footage using a converted version that was 720p. Uh, I thought, well, it's lower resolution, it'll run faster, the tracking will go faster, I'll get done faster. And I was kind of right, except that by lowering the resolution, the tracking, which I'd originally started tracking this little circle here, which is a sewer cover, for those that need to know, and it started falling apart pretty quickly in the 720p version. And I got some help on the forum, and I'm going to plug them quite a lot. If you need help with any of their plugins or tools, go there. They do go through cycles of feast and famine because sometimes they're busy working, like right as I speak, they're doing virtual SIGGRAPH, and so the support is a little bit delayed. But in times of feast, you'll have no trouble at all getting rapid support. All right, so let's get into the meat of it. So we have an imperfect shot. That's okay, we'll get started with that. Uh, first thing to do is choose the right event. Come in here and find, easiest thing to do is to go to Particles and Particle Illusion. And then it will present you with the settings. Now the first thing you want to do is track. Something that Boris will go over again and again when they give their demos is get a good track first, then worry about what you're going to do with the track. In this case, we only need a world track because we're only going to put the particle effect on something that's part of the world. So we'll come in here and choose world, and that'll open up some additional settings under motion tracker. By default, the world center will be at zero, zero relative to the track. This will become important later. So let's go into the tracker. And of course, it's going to start at the first frame. And by default, they're going to want you to put this shape 
over whatever it is you want to track. So the first thing you want to try is put that over the area you want to track, set the world center. Once you've decided where the world center is going to be, don't move it. You can't keyframe that. You can only keyframe the shape. Now you can come in later if you want to adjust the track and move the track itself, but I'm not going to cover that in this overview. So in order to zoom in, I'm pressing the Z key and moving the mouse. It's a little strange, but you get used to it after a while. And you definitely want to zoom in and put that world center right where you want it. I chose the edge of this circle just for the heck of it. Now the first thing you'll probably do is use the defaults. And those might work. They didn't work all that well for me. What I had to do was expand the search area to give it a little more detail to work with. Now the search area doesn't have to be part of your world center. The search area could be anywhere within your footage, but you want a search area that moves similarly to your footage. So you shouldn't go too far off track. And part of what I mean by that is there's a fair, fair amount of parallax movement between this area and say this area when I start moving with the camera. So you wouldn't want this to be tracking this grass over here and putting the world center here because Mocha's gonna have a lot of trouble with that. So I put the track here. Easiest thing to do is just to come in and leave the defaults. You probably want to change them in your tracking, but it's a good place to start. So we just start tracking and I won't make you go through the whole thing. So we will cut here. So I stopped the track partway because I want to show you what happens sometimes, at least with this footage, if you just use the defaults, meaning that shear and perspective are turned off and we're only looking, or rather Mocha is only looking at 50% of the pixels. That center starts to wander as we go through the, the footage. So what we need to do is come all the way back to the beginning. For this footage, we're going to want to go all the way and track all of these. I would also recommend with this footage to go as high as 90% of the pixels being used. So let's track that again. Now this track stopped partway through because Mocha just kind of lost its mind. It can do that. Partly because most of the pixels here just don't have a lot of detail. So we're going to roll this all the way back and we're going to expand this to include more of the fire hydrant and more of the dirt here and so on and so forth. I'm going to leave this at 90% right now and we're going to track again. And that track started to wander, so I'm going to stop it. Okay, so the final track that I went with initially was this one shown here with an oval covering um, some what I thought was pretty good detail. And it tracked all the way through. Now there was a little bit of wobble where it went off center, but because we're going to end up adjusting the track in the host, I didn't worry about that too much. But then I went down the rabbit hole that I mentioned earlier where I was changing the resolution in order to save time and ended up running into problems. Well, as a follow-on to that, what I ended up doing based on feedback from the forum is adding a whole new search area. So that the way you do that, you can ignore World Center uh, and its search area if you like, if you need a more advanced track. Easiest way to do that is disconnect it so that it doesn't get tracked, make it invisible, and then you can add your own Bezier and for this case, what I wanted was something that covered enough of the detail and had enough of a kind of shape memory that I could use it for this. So what I started off with is a shape recommended by one of the people on the forum surrounding part of this asphalt pad and including some of the grass. Now initially that's not you're not done. 
So what you need to do is come down and increase the pixel coverage. I found the best results with auto channel again. But then you also want to turn on the surface display. Because this plus right there is where the particles are going to appear. The rest of this, depending on the type of particle you have, uh, won't matter. For our purposes right now, it won't matter. Um, I'm just doing a point emitter. So we can go ahead and make this smaller just to make it a little easier to manage. And this is the thing that you want to watch when you're tracking to make sure it stays on track. And now that we've got the shape and we've got the point, we just start the track. And you can see that it's holding the track pretty darn well. Now, because of perspective, it's not always clear where that was going to come out relative to any given position of that circle. But I like that position overall. And again, we can adjust it a bit in the host, or for more advanced adjustments, you can go into Adjust Track. Now one other note is when you're tracking, if you add any additional layers, make sure to turn off the layers that you are not using. Either not using at all or just don't want to be included in the track. Anything that has that little gear will get tracked, even if that's not really what you intend when you select a particular layer. And we're done. And in my opinion, that's a pretty rock solid track. So we will assign that layer to the world center because we want our particles to come out of that. And you can name that layer anything you want. Okay, that caught me a bit. So the world center needs to be visible, but the tracking status doesn't matter. So we've assigned the world center link to our new layer three. And so when particle illusion uses the world center, for the emitter, it will actually use that little point right there. So save and exit back out. And then we can go into Particle Illusion and choose any particle we like. Now one thing you want to do when you go into Particle Illusion is do Composite Over Source Video. Because that lets you preview your particle exactly where it's going to appear in your final clip. Only it's much faster. Uh, it's at least two to three times as fast. Now you can see that looks a little bit unnatural because the, the smoke follows that point. So you want to choose your particles carefully. Actually a better particle. So the next thing you want to do is go back into the host, and unfortunately you can't zoom in easily in this window. You can cheat by coming into track motion and zooming in on the entire track. <clears throat> That's kind of a kludge, but it does work. You just have to remember to remove that later if that's not what you actually want. But the reason you're going to do that is you'll come into the tracker, show the motion path, and then you can come in here and animate X and Y to give you the exact placement that you want. Now you can get fine adjustment by holding the control key while you move the point. And on any given frame, that square is where that point sits. And you may only need to move it a few times. Something you want to watch for are kinks in this path. Usually you're going to want kind of a smooth path. It depends on either the camera motion or the object motion. But if you see a kink, be careful around that point. You may need to add a special keyframe just to put it in the right spot. So you can just scrub through the timeline. So when you're doing this, don't forget to sync cursor to the media um, so that everything, so that the uh, display moves with you. Um, but as long as that square is where you want it to be, you don't need to add any keyframes. And I think this track was pretty good for what I wanted, so I don't think anything needs to be done to that one. 
Now, if you want to have multiple effects running at the same time, your first inclination might be to put them here, but you really don't want to do that. The reason for that is if you're going to have multiple effects coming out of the same position, Vegas Pro doesn't render them very fast. That's going to be about the slowest way that you can render them. So what you want to do is go into Particle Illusion and add the particles there. So if I wanted several particles coming out of here, it's much better to put them in Particle Illusion. Now, if you have particles that are going to be in different positions, you can still do that in Particle Illusion, but if there's much in the way of parallax difference between the two positions, then that may not work. You may still, you may be stuck with putting them in Vegas Pro. So if you do that, but you want to use the same track, go into the uh, Mocha interface, then you can go into File, Export Project, save it with a memorable name, and then you can import that into the other particle effect. All right, so you've done all your tracking, you've added your special effects, and you want to go render. Don't forget to come back in here and turn off the motion path, or this will end up in your render. And then go into your track motion if you've modified it, and turn off the sync. Make sure you highlight it, the first keyframe, and restore box. Now when you render this, you may be tempted to render at a different frame rate, either because it's convenient for you, or you recorded it 60 or 120 and you only need 30. You're going to run into problems. You need to render at the same frame rate that your footage, um, that your project is set to, and that you tracked at. So for example, I did all my tracking at 30p. If I render this at 60, the particles are going to be, you know, basically two frames behind over time. The Mocha track doesn't get interpolated based on your destination frame rate. It does seem to do that in After Effects, but not in Vegas Pro. Uh, but once you satisfy all those requirements, you can render as normal and you'll have your effect in your footage. Okay, so that's a pretty simple case. So what if you have an object that's moving in the scene and you're lucky enough to have a fixed camera? Well, that's what our next piece of footage covers. So I'm walking through that same general area and I want to add a particle effect to my head. So what I did is came in here and just basically tracked against my head. There's really no special requirements that you need to worry about here. It's the same as the last one. Whatever you're tracking, you want to make sure there are plenty of pixels to work with. You may have to move the search area depending on exactly what happens. And so what I mean by that is, let's go in here and we'll add particle illusion and get this guy set up. We want to track the emitter. We're not using world because I'm moving uh, and the camera is not. And we're not using world plus emitter because again, the camera is not moving, just something in the scene is moving. So once we do that, we can go into the motion tracker and you'll have to advance with this particular piece of footage have to advance to the point where my target is in view and you can get away with using the emitter search area for this sort of thing because it's just not that complicated but you do want it to cover a good bit of the object that's being tracked again you may want to increase the number of pixels used we're going to go with translation scale only because I really don't care about rotation shear perspective with this particular track. Depending on what's happening with a thing you're tracking, you may need those parameters. So let's track and see what happens. Now you can see one thing that's happening is the track is wandering a little bit. So we're going to move this and zoom in. And it's because the, the target is turning. For this particular case, that's not that important. If I were doing some sort of product placement or labeling or a sign, then that would become an issue. But just for a simple particle emitter, that's not a problem. Now you may notice that I almost moved the emitter offset. That's going to be something that you're going to want to do from day one, and it's not going to work. That's just not how the emitter offset works. Um, those targets aren't keyframed, so even though the search area is keyframed, and you'll see that if I come over here, uh, a keyframe 
appears. Oddly enough, it didn't when I resized that. Not sure what's up with that. The keyframe display here isn't doesn't always do what you'd think it would do. Uh, there are keyframes for these parameters, and there are keyframes for the search area position, but they don't always display at the same time. So I've seen this bug happen a few times where you move the emitter offset and a keyframe isn't generated. So it basically moved the original, which is not what I wanted. So I'm going to have to go back and replace that. Okay, we will retract this. And I will stop this, and if the keyframe doesn't get generated, yeah, this time it, it manually generated it. So basically you want to expand that search area. Sometimes I have seen a case where I need to create a keyframe manually before it will auto-create them later on. That seemed to be the case with this particular track. Uh, but at this point, we should be able to continue tracking. Now, because the target turned again, I'm going to want to come in again and expand that search area. Overall, the emitter offset isn't in a bad position. We can adjust that later in the host, and we will. And you can see Mocha did the right thing by shrinking the search area as the target turned. But we want to come back in here again and say, nope, keep tracking this thing. And because we went off screen, <clears throat> the tracker lost track, and that's okay for this case. So I've mentioned a few times, you're probably gonna have to come in and manually adjust the track. And this is one of those cases where you're gonna have to do that in the host. So we will save this and quick, quit back out to Vegas Pro. and then put our footage on the timeline where we can get at both the effects window and see our preview window. So turn on the motion path, go back to about where the target enters the screen, and now we've got our square that shows where the emitter point is and the future track and a past track. And we see a nice sine wave <clears throat> as the target walks. And that track is okay. I'm not going to adjust it yet. But I think I do want to adjust it here. So, I think what I want to do for this one is go ahead and add an extra keyframe. One thing you'll have to keep in mind is as you're adding keyframes, think about what's come before. If there's smooth interpolation available, from the previous keyframe to the current one, you can get away with just adding those individual keyframes. If there's been any sharp movement, like for example, if the target had turned several times and you didn't need a new keyframe until you got to, say, the third turn, you might need to add a keyframe at the second turn just to make that sure that the target gets interpolated smoothly to the destination and doesn't affect the previous positions. For this one, we're going to come in here and just nudge the X a little bit. And yeah, this is finicky even holding the control key. So for fine movement, you may find you need to type individual values, especially if there's a lot of uh, distance between the camera and the target. So that looks okay. Now we're going to scrub back just a little bit and see what we think of the position previously. And it did nudge it over here a little bit, so I'm going to nudge that a little bit back. Ooh. I'm going to undo that because that's way too much. So let's do... And then once you have your track, just go back into Particle Illusion, choose the particle you want, and we will go with... and then we will play and see what that looks like.
Now until we get to the track position, the particle is just going to be sitting there on the screen, but then it'll follow the, the target. And notice how it trails behind the target because the world position isn't changing, but the emitter is. But Particle Illusion remembers those positions. Okay, so now the rest of the work is going to be back in the host. So we don't need the motion path anymore, so we're going to turn that off. So one of the things that we want to do is go all the way to the beginning and move that particle so that it's off screen until the target appears on screen. And just the way you do that is by adjusting the track, move it off screen, and then scrub forward until your target is on screen. And then you can nudge the position right back. And then you can scrub through the footage and make sure that looks okay. You may need to add another keyframe in between. So that's fine. So now we scrub to the other end for where the target leaves the screen. And it's simplest just to go until they are just off screen. And then push the particles off screen. Okay, the next thing that you'll want to animate is the size. So the particle size is okay when the target's off in the distance, but when it's near the camera, it looks a little weird because it doesn't get any bigger. So what you want to do is go into particle properties and animate the size. And by default, it's just at the, uh, the size that's set in particle illusion which at the very beginning is way too small. So let's go ahead and do this. And up the size and see how that looks. And you might think you could set the size and it'll automatically be scaled as it moves around the scene, but it unfortunately will not. So what you want to do is scrub through the scene, set key points for appealing size changes. So in this case I'm making the uh, size just a little bit smaller than the target's head. So you can tweak that to your heart's content. Uh, you can do all sorts of things with motion blur. You can change the number of particles. You can change the life cycle, velocity, weight, all of that. There's some parameters that you can only access in the Particle Illusion interface, uh, and I'll leave that as an exercise for the viewer. The last example that we have is much the same as the second, with the exception that in addition to the emitter moving, we're also moving the camera. And I won't go through the full steps for this, uh, except in one area because the elements that you learned in the first and second steps are largely the same here. So we have world plus emitter tracking, and then in the Mocha tracker, we set the world center. And This is a bit of an art as well, finding a good place in the world that you can say, okay, this, this is anchored, this is something that never moves, and everything, you know, when the camera moves, it will move and everything should remove relative to that in a sense. And then you also set your emitter offset, and in this case it's a turkey, and then just track. So in this case I was able to get away with very few pixels being tracked and only with translation scale and rotation. Um, again because I'm not putting labeling on this animal, um, I only care about its rough position in the world, I could get away with those. World Center, same thing. This is lots of texture here for Mocha to work with, so it really doesn't need a whole lot. Now where it differs a little bit from the other one is in that the turkey went behind another object. And at this point, the Mocha track kind of went crazy. Um, but it's to be expected because we were tracking a fairly small area and relative to that this pole is kind of large. So it blocks the track. So 
It was able to pick it up later as we were tracking. We were moving the search area to keep it over the turkey. But it just meant that a little bit more work was needed in the host to nudge the uh, emitter position. Something else to keep in mind when you're working with the particle systems and having to nudge the track in Vegas Pro is you'll probably find that because of rendering slowdowns it can be a little difficult to get the point exactly where you need it or just generally Vegas Pro gets kind of slow if you have a lot of particles. One thing you can do is go into Particle Illusion and turn off your particle systems or disable them. I've already done that here. So ordinarily you click on that and click on disable and your particles won't render but they will still be tracked by Mocha in Vegas Pro. So you can come in here and turn on your path and then nudge it without having to wait for Vegas Pro to render it every time you move the timeline marker. And then when you're done, just go back into Particle Illusion and turn those particles back on. And then you can actually use the faster rendering of Particle Illusion to see how they look. So in this case, for the first example, I ended up using two different effects. Nice little blast effect. And then these bubbles that made me think of Stranger Things a bit. And those look okay. But they did need a little bit more, so... I came back into Vegas Pro and started tweaking the effects that I was loading onto this piece of footage. And in the end, I decided that I wanted a little bit of lens flare near the beginning when that blast is happening. There. So we have that lens flare. And then I used Scatter Eyes just to give it some additional texture later on. So this right here is that scatter eyes and around here. And then I wanted a little bit more of a Stranger Things vibe, so I added some red edge lighting and also deepened the red in these particles. Originally, those were a light blue. The default particle is uh, our blue particle. So you can do all sorts of layering and add additional effects to get the look that you want. So in the end, I ended up with the following. You know, the original footage, the initial particles, the addition of the lens flare, a bit of scatter eyes added, and then finally the edge lighting. And of course I could keep going with additional lighting and so on and so forth. So that's basically an overview for people new to particle illusion and mocha tracking on how to use the world, the emitter, and the world plus em emitter tracking. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. If you have any complaints, please leave them in the comments below. Um, I'll be happy to address either one. Thank you very much.